back into the Chesapeake. Never a dull moment, never. And we noticed there was a lot of water coming down through the bilge. Thing that I'm supposed to move back is stuck. We're Jen, Elliot, and Ollie. In 2019, we booked a one-way flight to Colombia, and after traveling to 11 countries, we were locked down in India for five months. Coming back to the U.S., we decided to pivot into boat life and cruise on a 6,000-mile journey called America's Great Loop. Make sure to subscribe as we share the highs, lows, and everything in between. It is finally time to go back into the Chesapeake. To wait for good weather today, we have been in Hampton, Virginia for the past week. It is the eighth day since the rendezvous. We've spent a lot of time working. We fixed our bilge pump um, by, yeah, I know, it's huge. We bought a new one. Uh, they, we, we tried to replace it with what we had, but they stopped manufacturing our bilge pump in 2009. So it's a very, when very When we were old. still in high school. Yeah, that, that puts that in perspective. Um, so who knows how old it was, because obviously, unless it was the very last manufactured, it could be older than 2009. And that went great. And now we're going to Deltaville. Right now we are about to exit the James River and turn the corner into the bay. And we have a couple boats behind us also leaving today. So we're kind of going a little bit slow right now to let them pass. It's a little bit rainy but the forecast is good for today. like a clank um, as we're like pretty much just after I was talking like they're not into the bay yet <sighs> okay, there's an anchorage right over here we can turn into that and figure it out so we opened up the hatch just to take a look inside and we noticed there was a lot of water coming down through the bilge like there was a good amount of water I mean it was like it was a stream and so Jen took the helm I went back to take a look at it and I saw a lot of water coming where our shaftless seal is we have a, I think a dripless shaft, shaft seal or that thing was leaking profusely how fast are you going I'm going 14 okay go to 18 18 got it all right go back down this 12 12 go to 800 all the way down all the way down I looked at it again and then it wasn't leaking. Um, 
And then we tested like high RPMs, neutral, and reverse, and none of it leaked. So I don't know what that means. Um, I think we might need to have a haul out and, and readjust it, but we'll see. Um, I need to do some research to see if it's leaking anymore or anything like that. That could have, honestly, this thing, it could not be new, too. We have gotten water in our village before. Um, we just looked at it this time when we started, so I don't know. So we're going to pull off to an anchorage up here. Going to go kind of slower than we normally do um, just to get to the anchorage, drop the hook, and reassess. on our shaft seal it doesn't leak normally um, it doesn't leak at all really but yeah it was leaking and now it's not leaking so that's what's weird I think it's either one of two things either we had a lot of extra water come out of our exhaust which also came down the hose that leads there and that kind of seemed like it was leaking that's one option option two is that there is a slight leak on the shaft seal and it needs to be maintained uh, and maybe we need to haul out and, and take it apart and do the long-term maintenance on it but it looks really good right now so we're gonna basically just keep cruising and keep an eye on it as we go today and if it shows any signs of leaking at all then we're gonna pull off and assess and probably go to a place that we can get hauled out times like these I'm really happy that we fixed the bilge pump me too so not the way we intended to start the cruise. You know, it's boat life. You never know what you're gonna get. It's like a box of chocolates if all the chocolate was rotten. <laughs> I don't find that funny. You don't find that funny? Anyway, we're gonna keep cruising today. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on the bilge. And I did tighten up, so I did tighten up the set screw a little bit. I mean, it wasn't loose, but I just like gave it a nice tug. Uh, same thing in all of the hose clamps. So we're gonna keep cruising today. It's rainy, which is not ideal cruising, but the weather is good, and we're gonna really see it, see how it is when we leave, which should be in like five minutes. You ready, first mate? Yeah, let's go. Ollie, are you ready? Thanks for your moral support. Just wanted to give you guys an update. We've been monitoring it as we've been entering the bay, and we noticed that it leaks at high RPMs. And so here's the video of it leaking, and you can see how much it is leaking, just quite a bit. But it doesn't leak at all in low RPM. And by low RPMs, I mean like 1600, which used to be our cruising speed actually. Running at that speed, there's no leak. Running at 1800, there's a significant leak. So we're gonna run it at 1600. It's better for fuel anyway that way. Not, not that it matters. We are gonna go basically go to Deltaville. That's the same plan as we had before. Uh, the weather is really good today and we should just be able to cruise right along. Deltaville has a boat yard. So I'm gonna, so that's like our option if we need to haul out to get this fixed. Uh, I'm researching the issue now to see like what we're supposed to do about it. And I'm gonna be checking this seal every few minutes and checking our bilge and making sure we don't have water going in throughout the cruise today. Basically that's the plan. Um, it's never a good thing having water coming into the bilge, but uh, I'm glad we kind of figured that out now that this is causing a leak, so that way we can fix it. So Jen's at the helm. Ollie's sleeping. Wet puppy. And I'm researching. Never a dull moment. I've been at the helm for the past few hours, I guess. The boat's only a little rocky from what my guess is, is that right to our starboard side, like way off, 
is the mouth of the Chesapeake, so where it meets the ocean. And so I think we're getting a little bit of ocean swell right now, but it's really not that bad. We're not like thrashing, we're just kind of like gently like rocking back and forth. But this is actually very, very, very nice compared to a lot of other weather conditions. And it is a bit foggy, but we can see pretty far ahead of us, and we can see the shore that we're like close to on this side anyway, on our port side. So we feel pretty comfortable. And I also have marine traffic on my phone just to keep a lookout for large ships and vessels that might be around us. And that's because we don't have AIS. So this is one of our solutions. We use marine traffic and then we look on Nebo pretty frequently just to like get an idea for what other boats could be around us. And it's not 100% accurate, like it doesn't give you everything. There might be a boat like us that's not on AIS and could also not be on Nebo, but it's, it's just more information. Well, regardless for all of our problems with our shaft seal on this trip, I do think we planned the weather right because, I mean, it's cold, it's a little foggy, it's a little rainy, all that <laughs> stuff is not great, but there's practically not a lot of wind. The sea swell is, I mean, it was a little rocky, but not too bad, and now it's really, there's it's barely noticeable. It's still here, but it's barely noticeable. And the water is like pretty calm, so I think, I think it, this is our best Chesapeake uh, crossing and chain yet. It's our third time. And in our next cruise, we will be going through a monumental thing. So it's. Stay subscribed for that. Yeah, so stay subscribed for that and uh, keep following along because we're really, really excited. We just have to get to Deltaville first, you know. Right, one fix step. Fix the leak in our boat. Yeah, fix the leak in our boat, you know. One step, one problem at a time. <laughs> Deltaville and which is supposed to have a kind of tight narrow channel coming in so you're supposed to follow it very closely it looks like we're almost here which is really exciting because this means that we can get down to business and start kind of assessing the shaft seal problem
Well, before I go into all that is our leaky tripless shaft seal, we planned the Chesapeake to have a really good cruise today, and I think it was. Here's the weather forecast for today as of this morning, and this is kind of what it was forecasted for like the past few days, this is what we planned to leave today. And what we were looking for were a few things. One was the wind speed. So anything above 12 knots on the Chesapeake for us is like a no-go. It's just, there's too much uh, room for fetch. And even when you're on the leeward side, you're not that close to shore. The other thing was the winds were out of a good direction. So they were coming out of the southeast, which from our track today, you can see the southeast is the right direction that we kind of wanted them to blow. I mean, the south probably would have been better. The southwest would have also been okay. The north would have been fine, but the east directly and the northeast would have been probably the two worst. So good wind direction, good wind speed. And then we also looked at the wave height and the swell and the period. And so we had one foot waves, two second periods out of the east. And so like that's why we were kind of rocking and rolling towards the beginning of it is because of those one foot waves. And that doesn't mean every wave is one foot. So we just recently learned some of the waves will be two feet and some of the waves will be less. So you gotta kind of plan that I think one out of every 100 waves is a foot higher, and one out of every 10 waves is that height that it's saying. And so the wave height was good too. Our goal is two feet and under, unless it's following. If it's following, that's fine, and that means coming from behind pivot. Okay, the last thing that we looked at was the tides. Pivot is a trawler, she's not very fast, and so going with the tide makes a huge difference. Pivot slow, any tide and current is good, that's going in the same direction, so we try to time at least most of the way going at rising tide. And today we are running at reduced RPMs and we still are making six plus knots, which is like, that's great for us. And then the very end of the day, we were running at like four and a half. And so because we timed the tides, we saved quite a bit of time off of the journey today. So those are the three things we look for to cruise the Chesapeake. Because technically we didn't cross it today. We just kind of entered it and stayed on the Western shore, but it went fantastically and we're gonna use that strategy sort of going forward. Okay, that's it. That's how we do the weather in Chesapeake. All right, I've gotten into my work shirt and I'm gonna explain what the problem is as far as I understand. So I had a lot of conjecture earlier in this video because I've never looked at this before. <sighs> it's boating. This too is yachting. Okay. So I'm gonna explain this in as simple terms as I can put it. And I'm sure a lot of you know this, but I didn't and this is what I learned. And so I'm relaying it to you. What connects your transmission and your propeller is your prop shaft. So that comes from inside the boat to the outside of the boat. So wherever that joins to the boat, like where that interfaces, this area that's leaking. There's two main ones. One is like with a stuffing box. That's like the more traditional, a uh, little bit old school method. And then ours, which is a PSS, which is a dripless shaft seal. Theoretically, they have very little maintenance. They last for a long time and they're dripless. So they shouldn't drip at all. The way that they work is you have something attached to your propeller like that, that rotates with your propeller. And then you have the graphite seal that doesn't move. And then you have this thing called a bellows on the other side of that. And so the bellows compresses and basically makes sure that the graphite seal is really tight against the part that's rotating. And that has a very solid seal. So like one part doesn't move, the bellows doesn't move, the graphite moves, and then the thing on the prop shaft rotates. There's guidelines for how long the bellows and system should be in inches. What ours is now is nine inches and what it's supposed to be is between eight and eight and a half. So what we're gonna do is basically loosen the thing on the propeller that's tight to the propeller, like the farthest most forward thing, push it and squeeze everything back and tighten up the bellows and make it a little bit more tight and then tighten it back up. The way that you do that is with these two set screws. The way that you get this PSS triple shaft seal, say that 10 times fast, is they have a set screw in that's tightening it to the prop shaft. And then you have another one on top, like locking it into place. And so if you ever need to move it, you have 
the one on top that you can use because you can't reuse the set screws. You use them once and that's it because the very tip of it uh, basically compresses when you screw it in there and that's what makes it a very tight fitting. I already pulled off the two on the top, the locking ones. Nothing happened down there, which is good. Uh, nothing should happen. And they don't look like they've been used from the previous owner. Um, they still kind of look like they have the, the ridge, but it's not exactly exact. Like, according to the diagram, it looks more like the unused than it looks like the used. But like anything, I mean, it's been down there, it's been locked in there, slight vibration, so it's not perfect. So I think it's fine. Um, but I do think we're going to order some more um, in the future just in case this starts leaking and we're going to keep an eye on it after this. What I need to do is basically remove the ones holding it there. Then we're going to have water coming into the boat, which is going to be kind of scary. And then I'm going to pull it up and then tighten these into there and then put the old ones on top of these to lock them. What I've done is I've taken a uh, Jubilee clamp, a hose clamp, and put it on the prop shaft just forward of the, the thing that I'm uh, going to unscrew. So that way, A, I know where it came from, so I have a point of reference. And then two, ideally, you know, if there's a lot of pressure pushing this thing forward, because, I mean, there's water pressure down there, ideally, it's not gonna go flying out there and then, like, we have a serious problem. So that's the plan. I just realized, just learned that this existed about eight hours ago, and we're gonna do it. We're gonna go for it. Here in Deltaville, there's West Marine. They don't have these, um, so we'd have to, they'd have to be ordered there. And then there is a boatyard, Deltaville boatyard, but they're not open today or tomorrow. So that's kind of the thing, um, which I hope we don't need like have an emergency, but we have an emergency, we have an emergency and we'll deal with that when it comes. What I think worst case is like, it's hard to get these tightened all the way or like the screw doesn't tighten, which is kind of like a weird scenario, but let's just say it happens. Then I think we could either limp over to the boat yard, either running like very low speeds or just get a tow boat over there because it's just right across the way. And that would be like a worst case. That would be like a second worst case scenario. Um, but you know, I don't know, it's just very nerve wracking kind of working on this stuff in the water. But that's what people suggested online was to work on it in the water because you could get a haul out, tighten it up, get back in the water, test it, and then like you over tightened it or you didn't tighten it enough and you still have a leak. So then you have to go and redo the whole thing. So it should be relatively low risk, even though it just seems very stressful. Fingers so, crossed. Fingers crossed, knock on wood. We have a plan, we have a plan B, we have a plan C, we have a working bilge pump. So, you know, we're gonna do it. I just pulled off the second set screw. There's two holes and each hole has two set screws in it. So I pulled off the lower set screw in one of the holes just to make sure that they haven't been swapped already because once they've been swapped, you can't swap them again. That's a big no-no. There's a noticeable difference in the bottom of one of the set screws versus the other. So to me, that means we already go to like fully do this project um, and I won't be worried about it. But I mean, I'm still be worried about it, of course, but we are gonna get another set just in case. It's quite the position you got there. Ugh. All right, I'm going for it. Can you grab me my um, my bronze like wrench? My bronze Allen wrench, the one that's adjustable. It's not bronze, but it's like really rusted almost. Not really. Yes. get it so that's good I'm not still working I'm trying to get it out but I, I mean I am but I got most of it out but I got through the hard part try that okay. let's try to push it one more time um, 
You get that side, I'll get this side. Okay. And in fact, how about you use both hands? Uh-huh. And you rotate it, and then I'll push. And you put your hands in, I'll fit, fit mine in. Okay. All right, one, two, three. I am rotating it. Ah! 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 Did we go? <laughs> did, did we do it? We rotated it. Oh, what a nice. <laughs> Alright, I'm coming back up. It was a good try. Everything is fine and dandy, except for the thing that I'm supposed to move back is stuck. It's not really moving. So that's the challenge, it's the current challenge. Mm. No boat projects are easy, ever. No boat projects are simple, ever. The rules of boat projects. Well, there hasn't been much progress in the leak yet. Uh, I still can't move the shaft seal back. Uh, and compress the bellows, unfortunately. I tried to basically use the hose clamp as like a leverage point, and then like move it back, tighten it up, move the hose clamp, and just work my way back. And I think that's working, but the hose clamp is sometimes sliding, and then I lose all my progress. So it's been a very frustrating thing in typical boat project fashion. So we're gonna take a break. It's about an hour and 20 minutes before sunset here in Deltaville, so we're gonna take all the way to shore, walk around, come back with a fresh mindset later. You know what, I think we should rename our channel. Yeah, let's, let's hear it. Boat Projects Around America's Great Loop. What do you think? I love it. Has a nice like ring to it, right? Oh, Catchy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. we gotta pass it by Ollie. Maybe Ollie, what do you think? Boat project? No. This is the Ollie or what goes around America's Great Loop. Yeah, I don't think she approves. It is almost 7 o'clock. We've been up since 4.30 and 5.15. Day, day in the life. Day in the life. All for this little bugger. Hi, princess. Say hi, dad. Hip hop. One, two, three. Oh. Good job. Holy cow. That was not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, love, baby. <laughs> we need to come back before it's low tide. Yeah, we're gonna be diving into the boat. <sighs> Can we keep walking, please? You don't want to stop? Let's go. So we basically walked until the sidewalk ended. This also was a pretty long walk. We're at 47 minutes. 48 minutes, 2.8, 2.08 miles. A very nice walk, oh I loved it. And it's a really beautiful town, like the birds are chirping, there's not that much traffic for a Saturday evening. It's just kind of quaint. And it's so neat, because like a lot of the small businesses are boat related, like sailing related in particular, which is kind of cool. I mean, you don't see that all over. And um, it's just neat. I just want to point out that if you do come to this anchorage and you don't want to hike, you know, four feet onto the dock, you can go to the Deltaville Marina. I believe they charge $5 for just walking around and $11 for access to their facilities. So that is an option. And there's a couple other, you know, yacht clubs and marinas over here. So I'm sure you could ask or, you know, people are super friendly. This is basically our first sunset in the Chesapeake and it is beautiful like it's just there's so many different types of clouds out and then the water is like glass I mean this is how it's supposed to be this is like what it's about 
and I'm going back to work on the boat in the village, so that's how it really is. This is how it's supposed to be, that's how it really is. So I just wanted to take a quick second to give a what real life looks like. Real life. We always keep it real on Show and Joe. You know that. And this it, is our Saturday evening night. We're having a date with Prop Shaft. So. Yeah. We have, what, a month's worth of recycling. The back room is a disaster. It is 8.30 at night. Elliot is still working on a boat project. We have this all of our papers out to look for like information about whatever project he's working on. Our computers are out because we need to get work done, but we have not really had a whole lot of time today. The tools are out because we need room in the build. I'm about to start dinner, so that's good. 8.30, maybe eating by 9. Where's Ollie, you may ask? Oh, she's in bed. She's sleeping. She's... Come on, Ollie, you get to work. Come on, Ollie. But our beds are covered with... Um, our beds are covered with tools welcome to the boat. jingle for boat life is welcome to the boat that's exactly what it is today right now hope you enjoyed this little sneak peek real life boat life real, real. Mm, mm -hmm. boats are hard mm -hmm. well, that wraps up our day leaving deltaville entering the chesapeake we yeah. hope uh if you ever have to cruise the chesapeake our little weather tips work uh for you they're very simple things, but you know, they make a world of difference. Yeah. Today was just one of those boat days where it was just really, really hard because there's been like really hard boat days that I've kind of added up to this, but it just, it really takes a toll on you like mentally and physically and just, it's kind of draining. We did have plans to leave tomorrow. We have no idea. Um, it depends if we can like fix this tomorrow morning, but hopefully with a good night's sleep tonight, we will mm -hmm. come at it with a renewed spirit. So either we'll see you guys on Tuesday when we leave, or we'll see you guys tomorrow if we're able to finish this. Thanks for watching. It's like a box of chocolate. Cho <laughs> it's like a box of chocolate. What's up? Pivot Motor Vessel Terrapin. Terrapin. This is Pivot. Welcome to Deltaville and... That was nice. That was super nice. Go Marine Traders. Eric has a marine trader as well. Do you like pina coladas? Having leaky boats. <laughs> Do you want to be in the Bahamas? <laughs> or, or in, in the, the foggy Ch Chesapeake? The foggy Chesapeake. Do you like cruising down at twilight? <laughs> uh, oh man. Jokes on jokes.